My pleasure. Thanks, Adrian. So everybody should see my screen. What we're going to talk about today is exemption certificates best practices and reducing your audit risk. Get to the next page here. So today's seminar is going to it's going to last about 60 minutes. We'll probably finish a little bit early. So everybody's phone lines have been muted. Um, if you want to submit a question, like Adrian said, you've got the ability to type in your question. You can raise your hand, um, and then we'll unmute you. And you can toggle between your full screen mode and the control panel, panel view just by using that floating toolbar that's on your screen. So for any questions towards the end, if you want, we can unmute you. So exemption certificate management, we're going to talk about what are they, why bother, the collection process, validation, the maintenance of the certificates, other things to think about like billing integration and customer service, the automation of exemption certificates, and then Q&A. So what is an exemption certificate? Well, it's a document that provides proof that a taxable transaction really was exempt. There's hundreds of forms. The state of New York has, I believe, 26 different exemption certificate forms. So if you think about it this way, that every sale that would be subject to tax technically is taxable unless you have this exemption certificate. And this exemption certificate could be um, a copy of somebody's diplomat card. It could be a copy of a letter. It comes in all different forms. So why should you bother? Well, first of all, it's statutory that, again, if you're selling something that's taxable, for you to not tax that transaction, you need to collect some kind of documentation that indicates why that sale wasn't taxed. There's a financial burden associated with it as well. For sales tax audits, um, auditors look for that exemption certificate to explain why a taxable sale wasn't taxed. And if you don't have those exemption certificates, you may be assessed the tax associated with that. It also accelerates your revenue. If you get these exemption certificates, you may be able to um, release sales orders to your customers and thereby getting the funds associated with that from your customers quicker. It's a customer service issue as well. Um, if you've got a poor process around exemption certificate management, it can become a hassle for your customers, and you may lose customers and go to somebody else that doesn't have a good process because they're willing to take on that risk. And it can create some internal efficiencies as well. If you've got a good practice around exemption certificate collection and management, it can alleviate the burden between multiple groups within your organization. So exemption certificates today, um, it's a repeated process. And if you repeat these poor processes over and over again, it can actually give you poor customer experience. If the sales department can't find the certificate, they may be asking a customer for a certificate every time they make a sale to them. And eventually, your customer may just get mad because they're tired of giving you the same thing every time they make a sale. We actually went to visit um, a vendor several years ago, and they didn't have a way to track these exemption certificates. So whenever somebody came into their store, they had to give a copy of an exemption certificate, and they knew it made their customers mad. Customers have to spend time filling out paperwork, and it's usually offline, and it's actually a piece of paper that they have to send. And sometimes they don't even know what to do, and they get frustrated and just give up. Customers don't always know what certificates to give you. Again, New York has 26 different exemption certificates, so they've got to be somewhat educated to know what certificates they give you. If they give you the wrong form, you reject it and send it back to them, they may give you three, four, five different certificates before you ever get to the right one. Customers waiting on refund checks or spending time with customer service, if you've charged them tax and then eventually they give you that exemption certificate, you've got to then issue them a refund back to that customer. And then your account payable is spending time doing that. Your customer service people may be doing on it. Your customer may be calling to get find out the status of that refund as well. 
or you may be putting orders on hold because you know that this customer is exempt. They've told you that they're exempt, but you don't have an exemption certificate yet. So you put all of those things together, and it just gives you some bad customer service issues. So again, with these exemption certificates, sales and credits don't have those sales tax and certificate expertise. And these certificates aren't always stored electronically. Paperwork gets lost. Sometimes you're actually storing multiple copies of an exemption certificate. And if you've got a customer standing there that um, knows that they have an exemption certificate on file but you can't find it, sometimes they just get a discount. So you're actually cutting into your P&L by giving these discounts that equate to the tax rate. So a typical exemption certificate management experience, customers provide an invalid certificate. Sometimes it's really hard to follow up with those customers. If you're in retail, you may only get one shot at getting to that customer and getting an exemption certificate. You may not have a good process around reviewing the validity of a certificate. Um, you may just be collecting a piece of paper that somebody actually put in a bogus name or they didn't sign it and they didn't put in their ID number. Tracking the certificate expiration dates are probably the hardest thing about that. I know a lot of folks that have ERPs, they think they're doing a great job by being able to put in their exemption number into their ERP, but what about those certificates like Florida that expire every single year? They've got to be able to know when those certificates are going to expire, so that way they can go out and get new ones so that their next sale is tax exempt. Billing errors occur because data is inaccurate or maybe even incomplete. You don't necessarily have reports that show you what your exposure is for missing certificates or invalid certificates. And for me, this was a great example for me, is trying to find those certificates for an auditor. I used to be a tax manager at a telephone company up in Virginia, and we had a room full of binders of exemption certificates. And when an auditor gave me a list of certificates that he wanted to see, I never went into that room because I almost broke out into a cold sweat. It was a really stressful room for me. I would rather just call the customer and have them send me a new one because it was faster, actually. And then large recurring audit assessments. You may see that you've got audits that come in over and over again, and the one thing that you get hit on each time is missing exemption certificates. So by having best practices that you actually enforce, you can actually reduce some of these risks and burdens. So on the financial side, with sales and use tax audits, um, this allowed exempt sales, what I've seen is the leading cause of audit assessments, and it really makes up 35% of audit liabilities. These errors for a missing certificate can be extrapolated across an entire audit sample. Um, one of the interesting things about the sales tax audits, I used to be a tax manager for a paper manufacturer here in Atlanta. And when I worked there, when I first started working there, I never had an auditor ask me for an exemption certificate because it was pretty obvious that this 2,000 pound roll of paper wasn't being used um, for somebody's personal use. It was actually being used in a manufacturing process. So by the time I left six years ago, audit, every single auditor that came in asked for copies of exemption certificates. And it really made me step back and look and say, you know, Five years ago they didn't ask for them, but today they are. Well, exemption certificates are pretty easy pickings for auditors. They know that people have a poor process around it. So if they start hitting up um, and asking for these exemption certificates, they know that they'll be able to assess the money for it. And that's actually how our exemption certificate solution actually started. Our certificate solution was created by former California auditors that were auditing some of the biggest companies in the world and they realized that every time they audited them, they, uh, they assessed their money on missing exemption certificates. So rather than trying to keep beating these people up and assessing them, they were trying to figure out a way to help their customers out. So by having an exemption certificate process in place, you can accelerate your revenue. You can reduce your risk of tax credit only for the time that it takes to issue these tax credits. 
you can remove your hold from exempt orders when you don't have an exemption certificate. And then you've got the intangible side of this as well. Customer service. They're not, your customer service team isn't going to field these frantic calls from customers um, when they were charged tax. But on the other side, your customers aren't getting phone calls from you guys saying, I need to get this certificate because I've got an auditor in. Your customers are being billed correctly, correctly based on the certificates that they've got on file. And they're not going to be asked over and over again for the exact same certificate. So it can improve your cross-departmental efficiencies. It reduces the number of invoices that are short paid. It's going to reduce the amount of time spent on issuing tax credits. And it gives you a place that you can store these certificates centrally so people in other departments have access to the certificates that are on file so that they know when to ask customers for certificates and when not. And then Sarbanes-Oxley, it reduces your risk and you can easily identify what certificates you're missing. And it may even help you come up with your audit exposure that you may have to book. So we asked our customers about what areas they feel are the key challenges to managing exemption certificates. And what they came back to us was that the hardest part of it was collecting those certificates, followed by managing the expiration periods. So let's talk about that collection process now. So again, we went out to our customers and said, who in your organization is responsible for collecting those exemption certificates? And there was a resounding response that it's the credit department that's responsible for those, not the tax department. And that was actually where uh, we were surprised that most of the credit departments are the ones that get this. So then you've got this these requests that you've got to send out to your customers. Well, you can do this by individual request, request to a new customer or a customer that adds a new shipping location, or you can do a large campaign where you've got an upcoming audit and you want to be proactive and try and get new certificates from those customers, or you've got an audit that's undergoing now. If there's a state change, with exemption certificates, you may need to go out and contact all of your customers in that state. Or something that's changed within your company. Maybe you were acquired by another company, you acquired a company, you changed your name, or you've got Nexus in a new jurisdiction that you had never been in before. So with these large collection campaigns, you've got to figure out who your customers are and where are they. You kick off this communication by sending out um, letters, fax blasts, emails if you have them, or picking up the phone and sending those. Then you've got to track all of those pieces of mail that are undeliverable, the faxes that didn't go through, emails that bounced, and you've got to track all of those responses. Which certificates you've received, um, questions about whether or not something is taxable, whether it's not, questions about the invoice numbers, the products that they're purchasing, and of course those where you never got a response and you need to send out escalating reminders. So you've got a couple different ways that you can go through this process to collect these certificates. Well, what we've seen for people is that the primary method is manual. You've also got the technology, and then you can outsource it as well. So uh, manually, usually what we've seen is people create these mail merges and they track everything through spreadsheets. Um, those certificates that come in, sometimes there are a lot of invalid certificates. Um, it takes an awful lot of time to do this manual process. We actually took over a project for somebody several years ago, and they had given us boxes of certificates that they had, so we were scanning them and mapping them. And one of the certificates that we found was from 1960-something. And while it was still technically would have been a good certificate, it was actually invalid because it was issued to um, a name three names ago. 
So that was one of those things that had been carried around for an awful long time. So by using technology, software as a service, it helps improve your workflow. Um, it helps with your staffing. It reduces the skill set required by your employees. It can increase your compliance level significantly, and it gives access to those reports and those certificates across your entire organization. And you can also outsource that function as well. You can actually have a third party like Avalara um, manage the collection of certificates, managing the expirations of certificates, and managing the mapping of those certificates as well within your system. And just keep in mind that that part of it can be expensive. You do have a hybrid approach that we didn't put up on the screen that you can utilize as well to where you use both outsourcing and software as a service that maybe you're um, just signing up with um, a company that has software as a service for managing exemption certificates, but you don't have the bandwidth to get all of your legacy certificates in, you can outsource the function of getting legacy certificates in, and then you handle everything on a go-forward basis. So let's talk about the validation piece of exemption certificates. So again, there was a uh, survey that went out that said, tell us what you think makes a certificate valid. And the number one response that we saw was that it was fully completed. So what are the minimum requirements for a certificate to be valid? Well, it has to have the name of the buyer and the seller. It has to have the buyer's permit number or some reason why there isn't one needed, a description of what's being purchased, the nature of their business, it has to have a signature, and it has to have a date. And one of the things to be careful of is sometimes people create their own catch-all certificates, and those catch-all certificates may not actually work in certain states. So be cautious of those. Additional things to keep in mind when you're validating certificate is the type of exemption, exemption that's being claimed. Um, there's some states that don't allow certain types of exemptions um, in a state. I want to say it's the state of Arkansas um, doesn't exempt nonprofit organizations. So nonprofit organizations in Arkansas, they're used to just giving exemption certificates or a letter to all of their vendors across the country just be aware that in Arkansas that may not be valid. Make sure that it's on the right form. Make sure it's completely filled out. And then there's this matter of good faith. So one of the things that's been disputed quite a, quite a bit about exemption certificates is if a farmer goes into, let's say, an office depot or a Staples and he buys paper and he issues a, an exemption certificate to office depot and says that he's reselling it, are you required to look at that and say, but you're a farmer, you're not reselling our paper. So be cautious of that good faith issue when validating a certificate as well. And then there's some miscellaneous items as well, making sure that the name on the certificate matches the name um, within your customer master file and the method of payment as well. That method of payment, if it's a government contractor, there's certain things about the credit card. One credit card may make a sale exempt while another credit card may not. There's some publications out there about which, it, which credit cards used by government employees meet that exempt criteria. We've got a validation checklist available if you guys would like that. So let's talk about the maintenance of these exemption certificates. Well, you can store them centrally or you can decentralize them. And what we found is the best practice is to keep them centralized. It reduces the number of multiple requests that you get, that you send out to your customers. You're not duplicating the efforts by multiple people to get the exact same certificate. And how do you store them? By paper, like we did back in my telecom days, where we had binders and binders of exemption certificates. And they took up an entire room where then we had a matter of how did we store them? Did you keep them by state? 
Did you keep them by customer number? What if it was by state, but you had a multi-jurisdiction state? Did you have multi-jurisdictions in their own category? So that part of it was really tough. Maybe you store them electronically. You scan them and save them to your network drive. How do you label those? Um, images. Do, as you go by customer name, do you sort them by state? A lot of things to consider. And then you've got to think about capturing the data from those exemption certificates. At a minimum, you need to know what the customer name is, the account number, and the state. Really, the other piece of it that makes it the best practice is to know when it was issued, what the expiration date of that certificate is, and what the exemption type is. And even if you have certificates that are pretty obvious that they're not valid, keep them anyway. You may have an auditor that's feeling good that day and he realizes that maybe it's missing something. Maybe it's missing a date or it's missing what it is that's being purchased. But an auditor may overlook that. So even though you don't think that it's valid, keep that certificate anyway. When you get new certificates, make sure that you keep those older ones. You don't want to archive those or get rid of those because it may be an audit that happened five years later and you want to be able to provide documentation about those exempt sales from five years ago. So keep all of those historical exemption certificates. So how do you maintain these certificates ongoing? Well, expiration periods can be one to ten years. There's some that even never, ever expire, like Georgia. Make sure that you've got a method to check when those certificates expire and that you've got new ones that override those. Make sure that you have, and this is a suggestion on our part for best practice, that you impose some self-imposed expiration dates. So the state of Georgia, their certificates never expire. I always liked my certificates to expire every three to four years. That way I knew that I had a limited amount of time if something changed that my exposure was fairly limited. So if I get new certificates from my customers every four years and their name has changed, then within four years I know that I'm going to have a good certificate. So make certificates expire even if the state doesn't require them to expire. Make sure you're matching up your exemption certificates to your customers, especially as they expand, as they have new branches, new locations, or if there's drop shipments. Drop shipments for me are, are like the Bermuda Triangle of sales tax, and exemption certificates are a hard part of that drop shipment piece, that you can actually accept a home state certificate in another state. So make sure that you can flag an exemption certificate from one state in another state as well. And then also think about the expansion of your company. As you create Nexus in new jurisdictions, make sure that you're going out and actively getting new exemption certificates in those new states. If you're acquiring new companies, make sure that you go through the process to get new exemption certificates from those customers that you've just acquired. And let's talk about some other considerations about exemption certificates, like billing integration. You want to know when a customer is exempt. You want to know when that certificate expires. So if you integrate an exemption certificate solution in with billing, one of the things that is really helpful in the best practice is being able to know that when a sale comes in for a customer, that that certificate that you have on file is expired or maybe it's invalid. So rather than flagging that customer as exempt, you actually tax them. So a great example that I always give is in Florida. Their certificates expire December 31st of every year. If you have a sale to a customer January 2nd, 2014, and they didn't give you their 2014 exemption certificate, make sure that your system can actually flip that flag automatically and charge them tax in 2014. So always charge tax to your customer if you don't have a valid certificate on hand. So again, charge tax to your customers even though they may have submitted an exemption certificate. So what's going to happen with that? 
the customer is going to short pay that invoice. Then accounting has to figure out why that customer short paid that invoice. They're going to spend time reviewing that invoice. They're going to call the customer, and it's going to sit out there for a while, and then, then you finally go and ask them for an exemption certificate. Or it may be, and I've seen this a bunch too, that a customer won't even pay an invoice at all until you can actually resolve it and flag them as exempt and you issue them a new invoice that has no tax on it. Or the customer pays the tax but then wants a refund. And then just imagine the number of refund requests that are coming from your customers and the time that it takes to research those and the time that it takes to do the credit and rebuild. So all of these things really take up customer service time, and it sometimes frustrates your customers as well. So audit time, if you haven't billed your customer tax, and you don't have an exemption certificate on file, and the auditor has assessed you tax, you can actually go back and bill your customer's tax after the fact. Not many people do that because, again, it's a customer service issue. So what are the benefits of having an exemption certificate management process? Well, it reduces your risk of audits, assessments, and your ongoing exposure. You've got an efficient use of your internal resources. It's, it's less competitive. You're not going out and asking for the same thing over and over again. You're reducing the amount of time that your folks are doing administrative work. And you're actually spending less time getting ready for these audits as well. You're improving your customer relationships. You're being proactive in dealing with taxability issues as well. So how do you go about selling this exemption management process to your folks internally? Well, focus on the benefits that we just talked about. Go through and map the life of an exemption certificate within your organization. How do you go about requesting them? How do you update them within your system? And think about all of those departments that touch the exemption certificate process. Give concrete examples. Customers that may have been frustrated, um, the number of exempt sales versus non-exempt sales, um, what your potential liability is associated with missing certificates. Um, make sure that you throw in audit issues, that you actually were assessed a certain amount of money because you were missing exemption certificates. The number of tax refunds and the dollars associated with those for your customers where you've billed tax incorrectly, and the number of full-time employees that were involved in that. Or maybe the number of orders that are on hold waiting for some kind of tax resolution. And then the last one, if you're a public company, the reserve requirements that are required based on the number of missing exemption certificates. So let's talk about the automation piece now. So Avalara has a solution, Avatax Search, and this is where you can send out requests you can, um, your customers go to a wizard. You've got a place that you can store those certificates. It can integrate in with an exemption, with a uh, billing system itself, and it helps you manage those certificates as well. So Avatax really is pretty easy. You can send off requests to your customers from most ERPs. Your customers can submit certificates electronically. They can actually use their mouse to sign them. And that information can go between Avatax calculation piece and the engine itself. So again, if in Florida, if you don't have a new certificate for a customer come January 2nd, 2014, there's nothing that you have to do on your end. Avatax actually flips that switch. So what are the benefits of using Avatax Certs? Well, it helps you automate that certificate collection. You can, for most ERPs, send off a request directly from the ERP itself from that customer card. We track the expiration dates and the status of those requests that you send out to customers. 
it eliminates lost certificates. So because these certificates, in most cases, can be submitted electronically, you're not going to lose them because if they're submitted electronically, they're in the system itself. And they can be easily supplied to auditors. You're going to eliminate an awful lot of exposure for exempt transactions because, again, if you've integrated the exemption certificate solution with CALC, then we're turning the taxability flags on and off based on the certificates that are on file, whether they're expired or invalid. You're enhancing your customer service. Exempt transactions are processed quickly. And again, you can integrate it with popular ERPs. And it fits any size business. We've got some companies that are fruit companies that you guys are probably well aware of that actually use Avatax or but then we've also got some smaller companies that may only have 50 certificates that they manage as well. And I'll give you a couple screenshots out here. So here's one where you can actually send out a request to a customer. And again, you can send it by email, mail, or fax. And you can even view it before it gets sent out. So here's a preview of an exemption certificate request that has gone out through email. And you notice that I've got a circled on here a hyperlink. That hyperlink actually takes your customers to a wizard where they answer a couple questions. And based on how they answer those questions, we know what certificate should be used. You've got the ability to track all of the requests. So you can see when your customer logs in. You can see what certificates they've generated if they've completed that questionnaire. You can see the emails. Um, that have been sent to them automatically and when they actually submitted it. You've also got the ability to do a search for those certificates or those customers. You can search for certificates that have expired within a certain time period. You can look for certificates for a specific state. So we give you a number of ways to get to the exemption certificates that you're actually storing. So once you find those certificates that you're looking for, you can actually bulk print them. You can bulk save them. So that way, rather than giving your auditor a stack of certificates, you can bulk save them. And one of the features that we're releasing by the end of this year is being able to assign certificates to an auditor login. So you won't necessarily have to print them or save them to your server. You can move them over to a login that is assigned to a specific auditor. All of those certificates that you have right now, you want to get those into the system as well. So you can actually scan those images, and you can upload PDF images to the site as well. You have to go through that process of associating an image to a customer, a state, and an expiration period, but it's actually a pretty easy process. So I've mentioned the wizard before. In the wizard, the customer gets an email or a fax. They go to the, the internet. They click on the URL that's been provided to them. And they're given this screen that says, we're going to collect an exemption certificate from you. This site has your logo on it. It's branded to you. So it looks like they're on one of your pages. That customer goes through the process to fill out required information. And then they're asked a couple questions. Why are you exempt? And once they've entered that information about why they're exempt and we've figured out which form, they can then use their mouse to sign that certificate and submit it to you electronically. If they don't want to sign it with their mouse, they can actually print out a fax cover page. And they can fax you the certificate and that fax cover page. And our fax cover pages have a barcode on them. And that barcode knows what customer it's for, what state certificate was created as well. And it will map that certificate to the customer. So you can start using Avatax Cert really in just a few hours. It can be used as a standalone, or you can use it with the calculation module as well. For any of our customers that are current Avatax Calc customers that are utilizing the ECMS function within Avatax Calc, we can actually load that information into Avatax Search, and then we can work with you to get those images in there. 
And then those customers that aren't a CALC customer or that aren't using ECMS, we can help load that certificate data and those certificate images anyway. So we've got different varieties of our Avatex cert solution. We've got the standard exemption certificate management. We do have the POS integration as well. So if you've ever gone into an Apple store and you say that you're tax exempt, they'll actually take you to the Avatax wizard. So we've connected with their POS piece as well. We've got an e-commerce integration as well. So if you have a web store and you want customers to be able to create an exemption certificate from the web store so that way they're not paying tax right away, you can actually kick off the wizard from the web store as well. And then we've got the integration services where you can actually link Avatax search into a back office system through API calls. And then we've got our professional services where we can actually help load legacy certificates and do some consulting or training or nexus and taxability studies for you as well. So a quick picture of what an end-to-end -end solution looks like for compliance. You've got the calculation piece, the certificate piece, and then finally the returns piece. So when you combine all of these together, you've got a full suite of services for your sales tax compliance. That calculation, whether it's done through your ERP or your web store, that can also look at the exemption certificates that are on file, and then all of that information can flow to the returns. And that's about all that we have. I'd like to open it up for questions. My contact information is up on the screen. If there's anything, any questions that you have, feel free to call me or send me an email. Thank you so much, Christine, for that presentation. Um, there is one question. And while we're asking the question, I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll real quick for the audience. Are you interested in learning more about Avalara and the sales tax exemption or the exemption certificate uh, solution that you saw today? Great. And then um, real quick, Christine, uh, we do have a question. How does this work with Sage 100 ERP exactly? So with Sage 100, um, because we've got, Avalara has a tax engine associated with Sage 100, Again, as transactions come across, we can look to the exemption certificate solution to see if there's a certificate that's on file that's not expired, and it will flag that sale as either exempt or taxable based on that information. Do we have any other questions? Oh, oh I just noticed I I just noticed I was on mute, Christine. <laughs> It works better if I'm not on mute. <laughs> we do have a question. Um, Bonnie, uh, you should, we should be able to hear you. Bonnie? Yeah? We should be able to hear you now. Did you have a question? Um, I did. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, I was wondering if it's possible to get a copy of... Um, the handouts and slides from this presentation. And Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. So, yes, we will send the presentation, and we also recorded this as well. Uh, so we will send out a copy of the recording in addition to the slides. Absolutely. Thank you. And I'm looking. I don't see any other questions. And thank you, everybody, for answering this poll. I'm going to go ahead and close that out.
and share the results. Looks like 75% um, of you are interested in learning more. And I'm going to hide that so that we can see Christine's contact information. And if you should have any questions, feel free to contact Christine at 678-235-5164. Christine, did you want to close out with anything in addition? Nope, that's about all that I have. Thank you all very much for your time. I hope you've learned something about exemption certificates today, and I certainly look forward to talking with you and, and helping you get a process in place. Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Take, Take care. care. All right, bye-bye.